Welcome. This video covers how to create scatter plots in SAS using the SGplot and SGPanel procedures. What is a scatter plot? Well, a scatter plot is just going to graph points corresponding to um, two numeric variables. And these are really useful for looking at the joint distribution of two numeric variables and looking at what kind of relationship you tend to see with them. We can create them using SGplot and SGPanel, of course. And what we all we need to do to um, create these scatter plots is use the scatter statement as our plotting type and specify which variable should be on the x-axis and which variable should be on the y-axis. You could use other procedures. I don't want you to think this is the only procedure you can use for really any of the plots we're talking about. There are multiple ways to do these things in SAS. But PROC SGPlot and SGPanel have really nice syntax and are very easy to customize. So that's why we're focusing on those. Let's start with a plot. So um, again, all we need to do is use the scatter statement on the SGplot procedure, specify the X and Y variables. We're going to use the CO2 data set that we did before that has the uptake on grass, um, CO2 uptake in grass, and then we also had the concentration, the ambient CO2, CO2 temperatures that were measured as well. So we'll put the response variable, the one that we sort of used to characterize our, um, our data and our performance on our Y axis. That tends to be the standard of what you do we'll put our x variable here as concentration. This is what that graph looks like. And then again, what this does is this really lets us look at the relationship between concentration and uptake pretty clearly. You can see it clearly it starts off a little bit lower, but then kind of goes up a little bit. But then it kind of levels off as well. So if you were trying to increase the uptake, perhaps you want to make sure that the concentration is a certain level but it doesn't matter if you keep the concentration even higher than that. It doesn't, it seems to have diminishing returns at that point. There are lots of different uh, customizations that you can do on these graphs, of course. And since we have markers for our different points, you can change the marker attributes using marker ATTRS. Just like before, we're going to put an equal sign and then a parenthesis and put our different options within there. And so we can change lots of things like the color of the points, the size of the points and the symbol used. So this uh, graph here, although not very readable due to the light green, we've changed the color to light green, the size of the points to be a little bit bigger, and then the symbol to be a filled in triangle. And you can find all of the different symbols that you could use in the options that are linked here. You can also specify the coloring to be based off of a group. So we have these two different treatment groups, the chilled and non-chilled in this data set. And so we can add a group equal treatment option here. And SAS is automatically going to color the points differently based off of which group they're in. And then also um, give you a little legend down here at the bottom to help understand what that plot is saying. And so now we can see that there tends to be more blue down here at the bottom and more red up here at the top, which means, again, that the non-chilled is doing a little bit better in terms of CO2 uptake. We can also add trend lines. So you may have heard of just doing like simple linear regression um, on a scatter plot. And so you can do that very easily, just changing our scatter to a reg statement instead. Everything else here has stayed the same. This still creates your scatter plot, but then it overlays the uh, simple linear regression fits for both the chilled and non-chilled group in this case. You can also add in a smooth curve rather than a, a straight line. And so here we're going to use Lois for locally weighted sums of squares. Um, and we're just going to replace, again, that statement with Lois. And now we don't have the straight lines, but we have sort of piecewise straight lines in this case. We can also change the characters that you're seeing based off of a variable in your data set. So one variable in our data set was the plant variable, which specified which plant it was created at, or which plant the experiment was run at, I believe. And so if I just do marker char equal plant, when I plot this, I now see that the actual values that are plotted correspond to where these, where these um, experiments were taking place. And of course, just like we did with the histogram and the density statement and the box plot and the um, scatter statement, we can overlay these things on top of each other and have more than one. And we can also panel by. So we can take it to the SG panel procedure and then create that same plot across um, levels of a categorical variable. So here we're just switching to SG panel and adding the panel by treatment. Other than that, I've kept that same scatter statement, although we are now grouping by type. And so here we can see that there is a big difference in the chilled group between the Quebec and Mississippi types. 
And you can see the same relationship over here that Mississippi is lower, but um, it's but they're both higher, generally speaking, for the non-shield group. So again, we're making really useful insights into our data by creating these graphs. Let's go into SAS. Let's look at some of the overlaying that we can do and this SG um, plot and SG panel procedure. All right, we're back here in SAS, ready to create some scatter plots with our SG plot procedure. We'll use that same online news data set that we read in before. We had that shares variable that was sort of our response variable, looking at the number of times the articles were shared. Uh, we need another numeric variable to deal with. And so just glancing through here, uh, maybe we could look at something like the number of images in the file, so in the, in the uh, actual article. So we'll use that as another uh, another numeric variable for our scatter plot, num images. We'll go ahead, I'll just go ahead and copy what we have up here and bring it down, since we're still using the SG plot procedure. I'll get rid of, rid of that where statement. And now we'll go with uh, a scat uh, scatter statement here. And our X variable will be our, not our shares variable, because that's our response variable. We usually put that on our Y axis, but num images will go here. So we still got to use this weird way of um, accessing it. We'll have num images, and, and then our Y variable will be the shares. Let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. Okay, takes a second to run here, but uh, we can now look at the relationship between the number of images and the shares that we have. So that's kind of useful. We can see that um, there's a lot of um, articles that don't have a lot of images, and then less and less as we go out, of course, and then we can see how the shares are related. Um, if we wanted to do the same plot, but panel it by a different variable, we can, of course, do that by just switching to SG panel. And then, got to spell it right, though. And then I'll do a panel by statement and use that variable that we created previously. Type. And let's see what happens with that. All right, and so this kicks out a bunch of scatter plots for us. Let's zoom in a little bit and check them out. Well, we can see that there tend to be more images in the entertainment group, but the relationships between um, images and shares looks like it's kind of roughly the same. We're not seeing much of a relationship in any of those. Just to double check on that, let's go ahead and do the same exact SG panel, but let's go ahead and add in some lines instead. So we'll change the scatter statement to a reg statement. And this will do the same scatter plot, but overlay um, the best linear fits. Okay, let's zoom back in on there. Yeah, not seeing much in terms of those lines. So, well, you can see this one is trending downward just slightly, and this one's going upward just slightly. So maybe there is something there that if we wanted to, we could dig in and investigate a little bit further. All right, hopefully you're super excited. You can now analyze and summarize your data in meaningful ways and gain insights from that data using SAS. We've only looked at a couple really useful procedures here, so that's good news too. We have proc freak, univariate means, and then we have SGplot and SGpanel. With those procedures alone, we can do a lot of really meaningful and useful stuff. So let's just wrap up. We are now through this part where we want to summarize our data. You might call this the exploratory data analysis step. We can now explore our data, look at the kinds of relationships that we might see in there, uh, and then next we'll be ready to start analyzing that data um, using statistical techniques.